Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use the Scale 75 Ink Tense range to batter up some containers. Uh, we're going to use a couple of different colours. I've got the full pack here which you may have seen in my earlier review. But we're also going to try some of the Scale 75 pigment, uh, uh, Dark Earth Powder as well. Uh, we're going to mix this with some pigment paste. Uh, and try and make these a little bit bad and war-torn. So what we're going to do first of all is I've got some browns, I've got the red, I've got uh, the black here and I'm basically going to slap it on. Uh, you can see I've painted these, I sprayed this one red and this one is actually grey primer. Uh, I've done a couple of little bits of silver and a couple of bits of the bone uh, but we're just going to apply some of the inks into the recesses along the edges so I'm just going to do the reds along here. And the idea is not necessarily to make it uh, to paint it all in. It's just to apply a you know a little bit of shading uh, to each of the the recesses and lines as you go. So I'm not going to do the whole lot. Uh, this red is very very bright and intense, but like I said, it's just to apply a couple of different shades here, there, and everywhere on the uh, on the container itself. It doesn't need to be massively neat because obviously you want them to look bad anyway so I'm not like I said being particularly neat with this I am just as Lucy said in the contrast video slapping it on so it doesn't need to be massively important So that's just the red. What we'll do now though is we're actually going to mix a little bit of the brown in. So this one that I'm about to use is going to be Inktense Chestnut. Uh, so this is the lighter of the two browns and we're just going to follow the same pattern but blend it in with them. Don't be frightened to you know, really really mix some paint in and add some shading and stuff. It looks really really bright here at the minute. Uh, but obviously once it darkens uh, and dries uh, it should look quite a bit different again but again just painting in the recesses the brown on top of the red doesn't look massively different but we're going to be doing the same colour on the uh, on the grey one in a few moments uh, so we'll let that soak in a little bit but you can see if I do it over the top of the silver it changes it quite a lot to really really make it rusty and of course if you spread it out a bit more it thins out quite nice it looks quite rusty so we'll put that to one side for the minute I want to do the uh, ink tense chestnut on here and you'll see this a lot better on the grey there that it's obviously quite brown so we'll have some uh, some running down from the top there like some pooled water has run out Top here. So we'll have a go of the ink tense wood now, which is the darker of the two browns that you get in the multi pack. You can see there it's not as rich, it's not as red uh, as what the, the the chestnut is. It's a lot more kind of yellowy green. I'm going to do actually and then let it run down see that it's starting to run down all by itself and we'll just 
just uh, get a bit more brown off my paintbrush. You can see over the top of the silver again. Now obviously I've got quite a lot on here but if you put less on your brush you can probably spread it out a lot better across the metal. makes it look really really rusted and battered uh, and now we'll have a go of the ink tense black so I expect this to be very very rich there you go So you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Now it doesn't look like loads at the minute, but when it dries and we've built up several layers of it, uh, it's going to look quite a bit different. So you can see here the black over the top of the red obviously does cover it quite a lot. Let's put some in there to look a bit like smoke fumes. And even the ink tents would goes quite nice over the red. It's a kind of rust effect. So you get the idea. Uh, I've also got a, a small amount of green here as well. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this on some areas of this, perhaps on the undersides a little, to make it look like it could be moss uh, or where you know, there's some algae or something like that. Don't be frightened to like let the colours bleed into one another as well. There you go. So that's the first bit. I'm going to continue going with this until I've covered most of the containers uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. So you can see here I've added colours all over the place. I've even mixed them in. You've got this really, really nice green with a touch of green, a little bit of the chestnut and basically just, you know, slap the colours in most places. But what we're going to do now is we're going to dry brush most of the model. Uh, I'm using Celestra Grey here, uh, but you can use a lighter grey, um, Ulthorn Grey is a good one, or Pallid Witch Flesh uh, is also good, uh, and these are of course Games Workshop colours. But this is going to be Celestra Grey, I'm just going to dry brush the entire model, and it won't show up much, but it's just enough, you can see there for example, there's just enough marks on it just to tone some of the colours down ever so slightly and any parts that are still wet uh, it actually kind of pulls them and drags them to make them look a bit like chipping you can just see that it's just taking the edge off that grey so I'm just doing the whole model with it Like I said, it just takes the sharpness off the really br brightness of the inks. So I'm going to finish doing the whole model with that, and we'll come back in a second. Right, so you might be able to see on camera here, I have actually dry brushed it uh, quite firmly off camera when I wasn't actually leaning around it. Uh, I've also dry brushed the red one in uh, Shabti Bone uh, or Screaming Skull. Uh, but now what we're going to do is add some extra layers onto this. Um, what we're going to do is if you take a little bit of a sponge that you might have ripped out of one of your containers, uh, we're actually going to dab one end of it in the ink. Uh, and I am using a palette for this, so wipe most of the ink off uh, by using a sponge just to dab it off like this. 
and then what you want to do is just sponge paint it on like that and you can see there it starts to build up a little bit of a layer especially on the raised edges and it's just sort of grime and muck don't be afraid to go a little bit firmer along the bottom of course as well because we're going to be adding a lot of uh, a lot of weathering powder and stuff to there as well but there you go so that is with the chestnut I'll do some of the ink tense wood it's okay if you get it on a little bit I mean you can rub it you know there's more sm the smears on there that's fine there you go just really work them extra layers into the model add a touch of black on there as well just keep going and building the layers up and up and up and the more that you get on there the dirtier and grimier it'll look you could even do this uh, with some silver paint such as lead belcher or something along those lines as well just to add even more to it There we go. It's actually quite hard to see on camera, but in person, that you know, there's a lot of speckled uh, marks and stuff on there. So we'll do that with the other one as well, and then we're going to have a go of the weather and powder. Right, guys. So now that that is done, you can see it's looking quite battered and very, very tasty. Uh, we've done the red one as well, so we'll put that to one side. Uh, I like working on this one because you can really see the colours, especially on camera. Uh, the red one is coming out just as nice though. Uh, we've got a couple of things to play with. So we've got the dark earth um, pigment uh, and we've got the moss green as well. So two very cool colours. Um, so basically to apply these you need to use a makeup brush. I 100% definitely, definitely did not steal this from Lucy. I swear. So weathering powders can get a little bit messy. So, and as you can see, it's literally a powder, it looks like flock. Um, it, it's a little bit awkward to apply if you've never done it before. So your brush should naturally just pick quite a lot of it up. See like that, I haven't even, you know, I haven't really done much and my brush has just picked it up, just give it a very light tap just to get the excess off. And then what we're gonna do is push it into the uh, crevices here and work it in and it'll kind of stain the surface a little bit. You can see obviously, especially with this being the first application, there's a lot of spare. I'm going to tap a bit more of it off to be honest. Just work that in. And obviously if you go over the tops of the inks it'll create different shades. And then obviously once you start working it in and you don't have that much left on your brush, you can kind of spread it out a bit more so that it's not as stark and obvious. So 
what I'm doing is trying to, you know, give this a little bit of a, you know, maybe it's been leaked on kind of feel. Especially with the different shades of green. I mean, you could go the whole hog, don't get me wrong, and like add moss and um, flock and everything to this. I'm not, I'm just going to add a couple of little bits. I mean, you can also rub this off with your hands if you get too much of it on as well. Give it a couple of taps. Now, ideally, if you don't have a cutting mat, you do want to do this on top of some paper or something. You can see there, it's just stained it and helped add to those extra layers uh, that are on the container. So next, we're gonna try the dark earth. And what I'm gonna do is do that more towards the bottom only uh, before we move on to using the mud effect paste with the pigment. So, the same again, you can see that this is uh, a powder. And it's okay to mix them, just the same as it was the inks, it's absolutely fine. You can see there the brush naturally picks up quite a lot of it. Um, if it does drop onto, onto your working surface, don't be frightened to like pick it back up with your brush. But uh, I'm gonna try and not do as much of this towards the top and definitely do more towards the bottom. You can see the puffs of cloud there as well with using quite a lot of it. blend it into the green that we've done there. Looks as if as if they've been dragging some foliage or something into the container. So you can just pick it back up off the off the surface that you're working on. Work it back in. There, I think that's looking pretty cool now. So, I'm gonna get the uh, the mud effect paste out now. I'm gonna mix it with some of this dark earth uh, on a little mixing palette and see how it comes out. So, we're gonna use some of the uh, mud effect paste and I'm gonna use uh, a coffee spatula here. I use this mainly for mixing paints. Uh, and we're just gonna put that on there. Now, for the time being, I'm going to use the opposite end to just spoon a little bit of the pigment out under the paste. And then work it in, work the pigment into the paste. It does take quite some work and it is quite a bit thicker than um, PVA glue. But it gets there, 
just keep mixing. And essentially you're going to mix this almost like uh, the Games Workshop texture paint but without quite as much texture. But it definitely has the colour and application of mud as well. Really, really got to knead it right into each other. It does take, you know, 30 seconds to a minute or so. But there we go. Almost done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply this, I think, uh, to some of the sides, but also around here as well on the tips of the uh, doors. You know, like I said, they might have been dragging some foliage or something into there, the doors there. Gonna apply it on the sides so it looks like it's been resting on a muddy surface somewhere. Now you do need to work kind of quickly with this, it does set reasonably quick, but you have got enough time to mix a small amount uh, and get it applied on there as well. And there we go guys, that is one finished container done entirely with the Ink Tense range from Scale 75 as well as two weathering powders and a mud effect paste. Scale 75 do some fantastic products and I seriously recommend that you go and check them out. I've spent about, you know, the length of this video with, with slightly more by the time I did the extra sponge painting uh, and washing to do this. You could knock out, you know, three or six containers very very quickly uh, using these products uh, but yeah I absolutely love them and I'll certainly be doing more of these you can expect to see a whole host of these containers uh, on the channel in some future battle reports very soon but go and check out Scale 75 and uh, thanks very much for watching guys